In this video, we're going to talk about chronic limb-threatening ischemia. I find that students tend to confuse chronic limb-threatening ischemia with acute limb ischemia. Acute limb ischemia is the classic story of a patient coming in with sudden onset, pain, pallor, pulselessness, paresthesia, paralysis, and perishingly cold leg, the classic six Ps. It's an acute surgical emergency. It is different to chronic limb threatening ischemia, and we'll talk about it more completely in another video. For now, just remember, it is a different entity. We define chronic limb threatening ischemia as ischemic rest pain requiring opiate analgesia for at least two weeks, or the presence of tissue loss. The rest pain or tissue loss typically occur in the presence of an ankle systolic pressure of less than 50 millimeters of mercury, or a toe systolic pressure of less than 30 millimeters of mercury. It is very important to understand though, that to have CLTI, the patient must have either rest pain or tissue loss. A patient who is sent to you without pain or tissue loss, who simply has a low systolic ankle or toe pressure, does not have chronic limb threatening ischemia. They have asymptomatic peripheral arterial disease and should be managed as such. It's important to always know some basic epidemiology of the condition you're talking about. So CLTI is common. It develops in about three per thousand US adults every year. And at any given time, 1.3% of US adults are living with chronic limb threatening ischemia. Patients, their families and doctors often think that asymptomatic PAD or claudication patients will inevitably progress to CLTI, but in fact, most don't. Within five years of diagnosis, between one in 20 and one in 10 of claudicants or asymptomatic PAD patients will progress. Conversely, 90% do not. <clears throat> Risk factors for CLTI are the same as those for asymptomatic PAD or claudication. So smoking, diabetes, dialysis dependency, a previous history of lower limb revascularization, a previous history of ischemic heart disease or cerebrovascular disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and a family history of ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, or peripheral arterial disease. All of these are associated with an increased risk of CLTI. Any disease process which affects the arteries, whether large or small, may ultimately result in chronic limb threatening ischemia. The vast majority are due to atherosclerosis of the larger arteries. Less commonly, vasculitis of the small to medium arteries may be the trigger. On rare occasions, other conditions such as fibromuscular dysplasia, entrapment of the popliteal artery, rare thrombophilias resulting in repeated embolization and thrombosis in situ. Any of these can lead to CLTI, but they are extremely rare. By far and away, the most common pattern is a cigarette smoker, with the cigarette smoking driving atherosclerosis of the large vessels, resulting in chronic limb threatening ischemia. Clinically, the patients can present with rest pain or with tissue loss, or with both. The rest pain characteristically is worse at night. They can relieve it by lowering their leg below the level of their heart. So they often describe sleeping sitting up in an armchair or hanging their leg out of the edge of the bed. The pain tends to be felt across the base of the toes and they may describe it as an ache or burning and tend to rate it as severe. Tissue loss may be ulceration, typically on the pressure points at the tips of the toes, the heads of the metatarsals, the calcaneum, or the classical position over the lateral malleolus. Alternatively, they may present with dry gangrene. This may range from small little black patches on the tips of the toes to more extensive dry gangrene, possibly with all of the toes affected. 
The clinical approach to a possible CALTI patient is, as always, to take a history and perform a physical examination. For CLTI patients, the history and exam is the same as that outlined in the video on clinical assessment for possible PAD and the video on leg ulcer clinical assessment. If you're faced with a patient who has gangrene, treat them as if they have a leg ulcer, ask the same questions and perform a similar examination. Now what? As medical students, we all like very definite management plans. Patient has condition X, prescribe treatment and investigation plan Y. But unfortunately with CLTI, there is no real one size fits all management plan. A lot of these patients have multiple comorbidities like obstructive airways disease or congestive cardiac failure. A large proportion of them with minor tissue loss will actually settle down with just best medical therapy and will thus downstage from chronic limb threatening ischemia to asymptomatic PAD. So it's very difficult to come up with a generic management plan that suits all of these patients. And it's important to evaluate the patient in front of you and come to an agreed management plan that suits the patient's own circumstances. Investigations to consider for chronic limb threatening ischemia can be divided into bloods, imaging and special tests. For bloods, consider a full blood count to rule out anemia as a contributor. Many of these patients have underlying renal impairment and they might need contrast exposure, so it's important to determine their baseline renal function. An elevated pro-BMP correlates with an increased periprocedural cardiac event risk, so it's useful for risk stratification. Imaging-wise, a plain chest X-ray may demonstrate cardiomegaly or pulmonary edema, again aiding the decision as to whether or not a patient is fit for an intervention. If you feel they are fit for an intervention, then arterial tree imaging is indicated. Depending on the unit and on the patient, this may be any one of an arterial duplex, a CT or an MR angiogram, or a digital subtraction angiogram. Finally, special tests may be indicated. An ankle brachial index or a toe brachial index gives an absolute measure of the toe or foot perfusion and may be useful in terms of risk stratification. It is important to remember that arterial tree imaging is not always mandatory. Some patients may present with extremely advanced gangrene such that their limb is not salvageable. Those patients are best served by a primary amputation and arterial tree imaging won't influence their management. Other patients may present with such severe comorbidities, for example, patients who are unable to lie flat and are on home oxygen and wheelchair bound due to COPD. These patients are unlikely to tolerate an arterial intervention. Therefore, arterial tree imaging will not alter their management. For the general management of CLTI patients, all of them should be told to stop smoking. An antiplatelet and a statin should be prescribed unless there are contraindications. If they have tissue loss, they may need nutritional supplementation. It is important that they all have adequate pain relief. If they are a candidate for revascularization, this needs to be arranged promptly. For some patients, particularly those with a neuroischemic ulcer, offloading of the area may be important in order to minimize further pressure and also to minimize foot swelling. But you should be sure never to tell a CLTI patient to elevate their foot on a footstool. Most people interpret this as placing their heel on the footstool, which will simply lead to pressure necrosis of their heel. Remember, their foot already is suffering from a lack of blood supply and the area around the calcaneum is chronically malperfused at the best of times. Instead, get them to elevate their leg by placing a footstool behind the calf, so the foot and the heel are floating free in the air, as shown in the diagram. The prognosis with chronic limb-threatening ischemia depends on the stage. Obviously, the more advanced the ischemia and tissue loss, the worse the outcome. For patients with advanced CLTI, overall about 4 in 10 lose the affected limb within a year. Of those who undergo revascularization, half have either died or lost the limb within five years, 
So the prognosis for patients with CLTI is always guarded. Thanks for watching. The revision notes are available at www.vascularTutor.com. And don't forget to throw us a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.